Hello, um, my name is Milan Asakulovatna. I'm an MYP3 student. I've uh, been in the school for 11 years. And I am today, I will be talking to you about the school system and why it is far from perfect. Okay, so before I begin with this TED Talk, I'm going to start off with a small activity. And this activity is pretty straightforward, but what you have to do is you have to spot the difference. So I will be showing two different pictures. And what you need to do is you need to spot the difference between those two different pictures. Let's start with computers. So computers, as we know it, is revolutionizing. It's gone from things, a gimmick, to what we use on a daily basis. It is the, it is the main reason why I'm up here today, and it would not be possible without computers. And then you have New York. The light bulb was invented in 1879, and, and it was such a revolutionary change that it became the symbol for a great idea. In the past 200 years, New York has gone from, from that to this. To, as it's revolutionized. And then you have cars. Now, I watch a lot of car documentaries, so you probably might not know this, but cars have been also revolutionizing as well. We've gone from cars that can only go up to 30 kilometers per hour to completely changing cars as we know it today. But then what if I show you this? Take a close look at it. Do you see a difference? Is that difference as big as any of the other pictures I showed you? Society is changing at rapid rates, but school doesn't seem to be changing with it. Why? Because the school system is very, very old built off the intentions of working in factories. It is, education and learning was not the priority then. It is simply an adaptation of what the schools were like in the 1800s. Schools in the 1800s were there to prepare you for the Industrial Revolution. But then how does it relate? Okay, one picture may seem like Nothing, but what about if I go a bit deeper? So in school, we are divided into a schedule. Five days a week, eight hours a day, and then we are divided into subtopics. Those subtopics, or those subdivisions in school, relate to the Industrial Revolution, because in factories, you would have subdivisions with different areas and different subjects and different um, places of manufacturing. Just like that, school, it's the same. Five days a week, eight hours a day, doesn't that seem a bit, you know, doesn't that seem to relate to the Industrial Revolution? Don't you see that there's clearly a connection between the Industrial Revolution and school systems today? Oh, and if I were to go a bit further, what about bells? Do you, have you ever wondered where bells came from, where they originated from? They came from the Industrial Revolution and they tell us when to go to which period of class, where to go. Which brings me on to my next topic. Schools are like an assembly line for students. You group them by their manufacturing date, you send them on a journey, an assembly line, a fixed assembly line, and by the end of the assembly line, you are the finished product, and they slap a degree on you, and they send you on their way. That's school in a nutshell. You have no authority for what, for, your, for what you do in school. Because everything's already planned for you. Your schedule, what you do in school, when you're supposed to speak, everything is planned for you, which gives you that intention or that idea that, wait a minute, in order to be successful in life, you must do what you're told. That is not true in today's standards. It is repetitive. You do the same thing over and over again. The school system was built so that for the intention that when you grow older, you will go and work in a factory. You will do the same thing every day, eight hours a day, um, five days a week, in order to get food on your plate. But that's, but that, and that persists a problem. Let's start with the curriculum. So the curriculum, often derived from textbooks, is like the guide to that assembly line. 
It is the instructions. It is what should be thought. And there are two ways to teach that. And I categorize them as passive and non-passive techniques. Teachers use this method in order to teach students or to get the information from that textbook onto the students' minds. So, in a nutshell, what is passive and non-passive learning, you may ask? Well, passive learning is repetitive. It is boring and it is easy. It is the most commonly used technique in schools today. It is, for instance, you have lecturing, reading, anything that is student-led or passive is considered passive learning. Then, you have non-passive learning, which is the complete opposite to passive learning. It is different, it is unique, it is engaging, but most importantly, it is hard and it is challenging. And it is a system or a learning technique that is not used in schools today. It goes from discussions to engaging activities. It is mainly student-led. It, it affects the student's critical thinking. It's not just doing tasks, they're thinking about it. That's the difference between passive and non-passive learning. And connecting it back to passive learning, passive learning is just learning things temporarily. So in short, we've also redefined the meaning of learning and the value of learning. Learning isn't a thing where you want to educate yourself in order to be better at something. It is to get a good grade. It is passive. It is not for the intention of holding on to that information for the rest of your life. We have redefined learning. And guess what? With all, out of all of what I just mentioned, they still don't teach us the right things because we don't use 90% of the stuff that we are taught in school. So all those efforts are essentially to waste because what is the point of school if we're only, if we're only using 10% of the things that we learn every single day? And then this goes further with competition, academic versus non-academic. Now, if I told you those two words, you tell me, well, who do you think is smarter, the person who's academic or the person who is non-academic? Well, in a nutshell, academic means you're smart. You can do things right. You are a success. Non-academic means you're dumb. And, is, and this is all defined by your grade. And grading is flawed as well. Because, well, to put it in short, if you're going to take a test, right, grading only tests your ability to passively learn something for a short period of time in order to take that test. It is not about your true understanding. Success isn't whether how much you learn, rather how much you can reflect of that learning. It isn't about how smart you are, it is about how much you can show the teachers, hey, I did this, I did that, I did this, get me a good grade, I did a great job, I am successful. And then this ties in to an analogy which I have. You can teach or you can educate, you can give AI a certain piece of information. You can tell it, give it some instructions, tell it to do something with that information. But the reason why humans will always be on top is because humans have something AI don't. They have logical thinking. And the thing is, logical thinking is often neglected in schools. Do you know what machine learning is? One day AI will take over or be on top in terms of logical thinking skills because machine learning. But in schools, we don't spend time developing those skills of learning. We spend time educating the children. We just stuff them with education, with a bunch of um, information, but we don't actually develop the skills for them to use that information. That's why 90% is not used in school. And guess what? Wake up, we are human. We have passions, we have interests, we have hobbies, we have dreams, we have goals. We have feelings, we have wants, we have quirks, we have imperfections. Most importantly, we have a life. We are not robots. They are trying to turn us into robots, not the people who invented those robots. Have you always wondered why it was the people that who, do, who drop out of school end up in the top of life because they don't follow the rules. They don't do what they're told. They, they challenge that. And that's why they're on top and we are on the bottom. And that's why schools need to change. And guess what? We all learn differently. We are not the same base in the assembly line. They put us through the same process, yet we're all different. Maybe, let's just say, the clothing size might be a bit off. 
and it won't fit right. Or maybe your base is too tall, so you can't attach some of the learning that you want to attach during the assembly line. We're all different. We're all human. We all learn differently. We have different learning techniques. We have different interpretation of that learning. We have a different pace. Because I've known people who deserve to be, let's just say, in 11th grade, and maybe they're at 6th. Okay? We all learn at different paces. We have different amount of time in order for the neurons to connect in our brain. Capabilities. We have different capabilities. Some of us are really good at writing essays, but others are not. Some of us are good at doing speeches, others are not. We have different skills that need to be developed and, def and preferences. We don't all love math. We don't all love learning language and literature. We don't all like doing public speaking. Yet, we're put in the same classroom. Now, for the second activity, I want us to do some math. So now we're steering away from things that I have seen to things I have experienced, something that's been deep inside my heart for all these years, and finally, I'm getting the chance to speak about it. So in math, we are taught that an equation must be balanced for it to be true. For, for instance, you have 3 plus 2 equals 5, and 4 minus 3 equals 1. But what if I apply that to life, you may ask? Well, let's, we have, so we have our variables here. We have time and we have work and life. So I want to figure out all the things that we do in a 24-hour basis, right? So what I have done is I'm going to calculate all the things that we do in life in a certain period of time. Time is our constant. So I will sub substitute that constant for 24 hours. Now, in those 24 hours, I want to figure out how much work do we do and how much life do we live. So that means work plus life equals time. So let's define those variables. So as you can see, this is an average, right? There are different, this is what I think needs to be done on a daily basis. And it accounts for 26.25 hours of our lives. But wait, there's a problem because 26.25 does not equal 24 hours. So what do we do, you may ask? We subtract. What do we subtract for? Our lives. We have less sleep. We completely neglect sports. We neglect family time. We neglect social engagement. What? So we can account for all the work that must be done on a daily basis. What if we don't do that? Oh, we just push it the next day. What do you think is going to happen on the next day? And this goes into scenarios. What if I have an a dinner that I need to attend to? What if I have, let's just say, I spend some time with my friends and family? What do you think is going to happen to the workload that I have to manage? All those different scenarios, some of us have to say extra 30 minutes after school. Some of us have to, let's just say, do sports. Some of us have um, classes to attend for music for some, for some reason. All these scenarios tie in to this main idea which I have talked to you about. We don't have time. We are not bad at managing our time. We are just not given the time to manage. The effect. Okay, yeah, I get it. We don't have to give them enough time. We have a lot of problems. But what about, but what does that do to students? Well, we are physically unstable. We are tired. We are mentally unstable. We are depressed. We are demotivated. We are uninspired. We are not creative. We are pressured. We are helpless because we have no say in what we do every single day. We are no life robots. This is why there are many people like me. They prefer taking away school over life because who would want to be like this person? Who would want to be them? Change is happening, but it's not happening fast enough. If we go to Finland, for instance, they have schools where they don't have homework, they don't have standardized tests, there are no comparisons, there's no competition, it's all great, right? This means that you're smarter, you're, you're, you have better physical, mental health, and above all of those aspects, they're still one of the top education systems in the world, and the happiest country in the world. They're given more time to be children, to be kids, to live life. We need to stop preparing students for the past. Instead, we need to look to the future, to the present, and prepare them for the future. Thank you.